In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the main functions that you have while charting in Empower. First of all, I'll show you where you can find charts. In the Insert section of PowerPoint, you can find Empower Charts right here. By clicking on the button Empower Charts, you can see the wide range of charts that you can possibly insert into your presentation. The Gun Chart button allows me to add a gun chart to my slide, which we're going to do later in this video. Via the Excel Link Split button, you can create, update and manage all of your Excel links. By clicking on the More Split button, you can access the chart's user settings and use the converting function to, for example, convert PowerPoint or ThinkSell charts into Empower charts. If you also work with Empower Slides, you can find Empower charts in the Insert section of the Empower ribbon. Right here you can find the Charts, Gun, Chart and Excel link buttons. By clicking on More, you can find the Converter at the very bottom. And in the Help section, you can find the Charts user settings right here. To begin with, I'm going to insert a new chart on this slide. As you can see, there is a content placeholder on this slide. By clicking on the Charts button and choosing the chart type that I want to use, in this case I'm going to go with a stacked column chart, a chart will be inserted into the placeholder. And in order to show you what happens if there's no placeholder on my slide, I'll quickly insert another slide with a layout that doesn't use a placeholder. Now I select the chart type once again that I need. And then I have to select the area in which my chart should be inserted. And in this case, because I'm not working with a placeholder, click and drag to define the area. But we don't need this chart, so I'll quickly delete the slide once again. And as you can see in this chart, it is created on some default data and I can now further work with it. And how you can do this is what I'm going to show you right now. Above my chart, I can find the so-called action bar with several menus with which I can adjust my chart. Note that you can also directly work in the chart and for example, select one data point. As you can see, an overlay menu is appearing where I can further adjust the selected element concerning the formatting and other settings. In this case, I could, for example, change the color or pattern of this data point. If I select this data label, the overlay menu enables me to format the respective data label. Or I could, for example, select if I want to use an automatic connector line that would appear when I move my label around, as you can see right here. The Lines menu allows me to insert different kinds of lines and breaks. I can, for example, create a growth error by clicking right here and selecting the start and end point of my arrow. Right here, you can adjust the data label settings and define what the labels should display and how they should be formatted. The Series menu allows me to access the central settings for the different series that I might use in my chart. Amongst others, I can select how my series should be displayed, for example, as a line or a column, or with how many value axes I want to work with. In the Properties menu, I can adjust some global settings for my chart, for example, the bar width, or if I want to use a legend or change the customizing. In the data menu, I can define if my series are arranged in rows or in columns and in which way my series and categories should be ordered. Moreover, I can link this chart to an Excel file right here. By clicking on Edit Data, I can access the mini Excel where I can work with the data of my chart. Note that we created separate videos for all those menus where you can find further information on the wide possibilities of adjusting your chart that these menus offer. Now I'm going to show you how you can insert a Gantt chart. To do so, I simply click on the Gantt button. And as you can see, the so-called Gantt wizard opens up where I can define the basic settings of my Gantt chart, for example, the timeline and the header settings or 
if I want to use a notes area column. By clicking on insert, a beautiful gun chart is created on this slide that I can now further work with. I could, for example, add a row by simply clicking on this little plus button right here. A task can be inserted by simply clicking into my chart and dragging like that. And I could further adjust the dates of my task by selecting this option in the overlay menu. If I click anywhere into my chart, I have the possibility to add several elements, for example, another task, a milestone, a highlight or a dateline. Right now I'm going to show you what a milestone looks like. And in the corresponding overlay menu, I have several options to further adjust this milestone. For example, change the date or the marker style of my milestone. Every Empower chart uses a mini Excel, so also the whole gun chart and every element in it can be displayed in Excel. And I can quickly adjust the data of the respective chart. There are separate videos where we explain how gun charts work in detail and what you can do with gun charts in Empower and how you can work with other chart types while charting in Empower. But I hope this video gave you a quick insight on the basic function and how you can work with your charts in Empower. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.